Hi right guys, today's video is about the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. There's been a lot of information that's come out recently about it. The main question still persists. Is it a safe vaccine to have? Is there a risk of blood clot with it? Should you be taking it? And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better idea and you'll be able to make up your mind. Previously, we talked about the European Medical Agency's report. That's the regulator for medicines in Europe. They had four salient points from that report. The first one was that the benefit of the vaccine outweighs the risk that comes with the vaccine. Second of all, your global risk of having a blood clot does not increase when you have the vaccine. Thirdly, there were no batch issues or any problems noted with the batches. Lastly, the number of very rare type of blood clot called CVST, which is a blood clot in the brain, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, was higher than they were expecting. It was also associated with something called thrombocytopenia, which means low platelet counts. Your platelets are basically cells that form a mesh when you bleed to stop you from bleeding. There's been no direct causation with the vaccine. However, they have said there is a possibility it could be linked with the vaccine. And the data for the UK says that out of 18 million people that had the vaccine, about 30 had rare types of blood clots. About 22 of them had CVSTs and unfortunately seven of them did pass away. It was also noted that patients demonstrated thrombocytopenia, low platelet count. On the 29th of March, the EMA got together again, this time with a group of experts, so a neurologist, hematologist, and epidemiologist to look at the data once more. They were trying to identify if there was any kind of risk factor for the patients that did have these rare types of blood clots. So they were looking at things like age, gender, previous, bleeding or clotting problems. The outcome of that report was that they didn't find any risk factors for those patients. And they also said they weren't able to categorically prove that the vaccines caused them. They said it's a possibility and further research and data is needed. And in the meantime, what they've done is updated the literature for patients who are having the vaccine and importantly telling healthcare clinicians to warn them about these rare types of blood clots. In addition to that, telling them about the symptoms of these rare clots to look out for. Look, with any mass rollout, whether it's a medication like a tablet or a vaccine, when you're giving it to like millions of people, there is no scenario where everybody will be absolutely fine. I know no medication that has no side effects, that has no adverse effects. Even things like paracetamol will have people who are allergic to it or have problems with it. That unfortunately is modern medicine. We have to try and work out and weigh up the pros and cons, work out what is the right thing to do. We look at a tablet that we commonly use, let's just say metformin. We give it for diabetes, type two diabetes, helps people reduce their sugar levels. It also helps them reduce weight and it's a fantastic drug, but it does have side effects. And one of the rare side effects is lactic acidosis. It's about three to nine patients every 100,000 patients. And it can be fatal if they get that condition. Often with lactic acidosis, the levels of lactic acid are so high that the cells are being damaged. You're gonna damage kidneys, your heart, and other organs. Do we stop giving that medication? Do we just ban metformin? Do we cancel it? And what about statins? They are cholesterol lowering tablets that are super common. About one in 10 people can't tolerate them. They get muscle pains, they feel rubbish on them, they ache all the time, so we take them off of it. And about one or two every 100,000 patients will get something called rhabdomyolysis. Basically, their muscle cells break up and releasing loads of electrolytes, proteins that go and damage kidneys, and it can be fatal. Do we just stop all of these medications because of these rare risks that they have? As with both of these medications, we know the immense good they do. So the people that take them have far more reduced risk of stroke, heart attack, compared to patients who don't take them. I think it's similar to the COVID vaccine. We know the real damage that COVID does. So if we don't vaccinate people, hundreds of thousands of people will die. Probably millions will have something called long COVID, which we're only starting to understand. So it's a difficult decision, but you have to try and make a decision that's for the best of the community. It almost reminds me of the train dilemma. I think it's called the train dilemma. Trolley dilemma, it's called. Basically, you've got a train or a trolley hurtling down on a track and at the end of the track you've got five people you're standing uh, somewhere and you've got a split second to decide and you're able to divert the train from that track to another track but unfortunately 
there's one person on that track, do you pull the lever? Do you save five lives, but unfortunately sacrifice one life? In this case, do you save hundreds of thousands of lives, but unfortunately sacrifice dozens? It's difficult. I don't think there's like a complete right or wrong answer. It's a philosophical moral dilemma, I guess. Different people will come and see it from different angles. As a clinician, we've always been taught to weigh up the risks, weigh up the pros and cons, and I've probably like talked about this to death, but it almost does come down to a weighing scale. And if the benefit scale is much better than the risks, then it's worth taking. And if the net outcome for the community is more lives saved, less mortality, less morbidity, then often that's what will guide our decision as clinicians. As with all of this, more data, more research is needed to see if there is this causation link between the vaccine and these rare clots. There may be a time that if the data is there and it does prove that it is linked, that we may have to reduce the use of this vaccine in some age groups or some gender. It's difficult to say at the moment. The general advice is it is safe to use. But importantly, none of this should detract from the fantastic job that vaccines have done in reducing transmission rates in the population. I think I'll end it on that. If you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, please share it with people who may be on the fence or not quite sure. Try to present the statistics, the facts, and some of the philosophy. And we've talked about a bit of philosophy as well. As always, I will see you on the next video. Peace out.